Hello everyone, uh, we're on video 3, Populations and Interaction. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the interactions of different organisms in the environment as well as uh, population size. So before we start, I want you to take about 20 seconds and think of what are the four main factors that you think affect the size of a population. So what are the four main things that will keep a population size growing, or keep it steady, or make it go smaller? Alright, so now that you've thought about that, we're going to talk about the four main things. And the four main factors affecting population size are immigration, emigration, births, and deaths. So your immigration is the same as human immigration. It's going to be the new individuals that move into the population. That's going to be the exact opposite of emigration, which is going to be the movement of individuals out of the population. Next we have births. Which is going to be the birth rate, how many births, how many new members of the population are born over a certain amount of time, as well as deaths, how many have died over a certain amount of time, the death rate and birth rate. If you look on the right, you can see the plus signs from birth and immigration, it's making the population size bigger, and immigration and mortality are going to make it smaller. So a population can only grow to be a certain size, and that certain size is called the carrying capacity, which is going to be the max number of individuals of a population in a specific environment that can live. So the number might go over the carrying capacity sometimes, but due to lack of resources or other uh, factors, the population will die off and go back down to the carrying capacity. And so the reason that there is a carrying capacity is because of limiting factors. So limiting factors are anything that's going to keep the size of a population at or below the carrying capacity. And those could be a number of different things. They could be disease, starvation, pollution, predators, old age, too much hunting. Um, any of these can cause population losses. And a lot of them can be caused by huge human effects such as the population or overhunting of certain animals. So how do organisms interact? So they're going to be interacting either through competition or predation, mostly. And competition is going to be when you have two organisms fighting for the same resource. So competition can be another limiting factor that causes the carrying capacity to be smaller. If you have two animals fighting over the same resource, they can't all get the same resource and survive. So a second form of interaction is predation, which is going to be when an organism captures and eats a different organism. So down below you can see the jaguar catching the deer. So that's going to be an example of predation. So Another form of how animals interact within an environment is going to be symbiosis, which is going to be a relationship between two or more organisms um, that live close together, and they're going to be in direct contact with each other, but they're going to be different species. So there are three major types of symbiosis that we're going to be talking about now. The first one is mutualism, and mutualism is going to be when two organisms work together and both of them benefit from the action of the other. So if you look to the right, you can see the bee and the flower. So the bee is going to get the pollen to go back and make honey with, so the bee gets a benefit, and the flower is actually going to have its pollen taken and moved to the next flower, which pollinates more flowers, which is how they grow and reproduce. So both the bee and the flower are going to both benefit from this interaction. And there's many, many, many different interactions uh, that occur this way. So another example would be shrimp or gobies in the ocean will clean fish. Uh, they'll eat parasites and dead tissue off of the fish. And so the fish is getting clean. They're benefiting. 
and the shrimp and the gobies are getting to eat the parasites and dead tissue, so they're getting their food, so they're both benefiting. So both of those are good examples of mutualism. Next, we're going to talk about commensualism, which is going to be the same thing, a relationship between two organisms that are different species. However, in this one, one organism is going to benefit where the other one doesn't benefit, nor is it harmed. So one benefits and the other one nothing happens to it. And if you look to the right, you'll see a shark, an obi fish, swimming next to this shark. So the shark is not going to benefit at all from these fish swimming next to it. The shark has nothing coming from it. However, the fish swimming next to it get protection from the shark because no other animal is going to try to eat the small fish when the shark's around. So that's a great example of commensualism. Another one I think it's important to talk about would be a spider in a tree because a lot of times when we think about these kind of interactions we only think about animals. Uh, however, trees and other living plants likewise can have relationships. And so a spider can build a web in a tree and this doesn't benefit the tree, the tree doesn't get anything out of it. However, it doesn't hurt the tree either. And the spider gets a nice shelter where he can build its web for food. So that's another great example of commensualism. Lastly, we're going to talk about parasitism. So a parasite uh, is going to be an organism that benefits while another organism is harmed. And this could be multiple different things. One of them could be that the uh, organism benefits and the other one is harmed a little bit, or it could be the organism benefits and the other one is completely dies due to the parasite. So if you look to the right, you can see a mosquito, which is going to be feeding on the blood of a host. And this could be either one. If the mosquito doesn't have any diseases, the host gets a little blood taken out, the mosquito flies away, um, the host has some blood loss, but as long as the mosquito flies away, not too much damage. However, if the mosquito uh, has a disease, then the mosquito is going to get the blood, fly away, benefit, and the disease could kill the infected organism that the mosquito took the blood from. Another example of this um, that is as like the mosquito in the sense that the organism is not harmed too much are barnacles that attach to the whales. And so the barnacles that attach are benefiting um, from having a place to live, whereas the whale, not too much is done except that it might cause a little pain or itchiness, but it's not killing the whale. So those are some examples of parasitism, and that is the end of this video. If you have any questions, please watch it again. Comment on Google Classroom. If you know the answer to someone who commented on Google Classroom, please respond. Uh, and ask me in class if you have any more questions. Thank you.